I want to talk about the inverse sine function. But before I do, I need to re re review a little bit about inverse functions and give you an example. f of x equals x squared has no inverse. Here's a graph of f of x equals x squared. It doesn't have an inverse because it's not one to one. And remember, the test for one to one is the horizontal line test. If a horizontal line passes through more than one point on the graph of a function, it's not invertible. But we can make it invertible by restricting the domain. And the way we do that is we just take a piece of it that is one-to-one, -one, like the right-hand piece. So let's focus on this piece here. And I'll ca call it g of x. And it's x squared for x greater than or equal to 0. So this domain restriction makes this function one-to-one. -one. And now we can invert it. And its inverse would be g inverse of x equals root x. So this idea, the idea of domain restriction to make the function one-to-one, -one, is how we make the trig functions invertible and how we get the inverse trig functions. Let's take a look at sine. Sine is very much not one-to-one. -one. It's got infinitely many of these waves in it. So you cannot invert the sine function as it is. You've got to restrict the domain. And so we, we restrict it to between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. That piece is one to one. And let's call that function f of x equals sine x for x between pi over, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. This is called the restricted sine function. And it's important to remember that the inverse sine function that I'm about to, um, to write down is the inverse of this. The inverse, I'm sorry, the restricted sine function. Restricted sine function. So again, that's this little red piece here. The inverse of this function is written inverse sine. This negative 1 superscript is not, a, is not an exponent, neither here nor here. It's actually a symbol for the inverse of the function sine. So make sure you remember that. It's sometimes written this way, and sometimes it's also written this way, arc sine. So those are two names for the inverse of this function. Now, one thing to remember, if the domain, if the domain of the original function is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, the range of inverse sine is going to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So I'll write that down here, negative pi over 2 is less than or equal to, I'll call it y, is less than or equal to pi over 2. The range of the sine function is between negative 1 and 1. The domain of the inverse sine function will be between negative 1 and 1. Sorry, that's domain. So. Whenever you invert a function, the range and domain switch. Again, most important thing to remember about the inverse trig functions is that we first have to restrict the domain and make the function one-to-one -one in order to make them invertible.